everybody. I hope you guys have had a great weekend and I appreciate everybody turning in um, their speech topics and also their chapter review questions. And I will be uh, continuing to go through those and offering feedback to you. Um, what I want to do right now is talk a little bit about chapters one and two, which is what is due um, for this week. And I want to go over a few things that you'll see on your midterm. So always good to make notes for you guys. Um, that way you'll be prepared. Um, first thing is, you know, one of the biggest things that people say about speeches is that they get super nervous. They rank um, giving a speech with some of the most nerve wracking things that you can do. And and it can be a little nerve wracking. Now this is gonna be a different experience because we're not up in front of each other, but it's still important to take it seriously and to try and make it as real world as possible. So one thing I want you to know is nervousness is absolutely normal. It is very normal, um, it happens to everybody. And you can actually use nervousness to make your speech better. You can actually look at it as more of, hey, I care, or I'm super excited, and kind of train your mind to think, you know what? I can turn this nervous feeling into an excited feeling and work for the positive. So nervousness is normal. That's important to know. And the midterm is going to ask you, um, what do you know about nervousness? And also, how can we deal with nervousness? So in other words, what are some things that we can do to not be so nervous? So we can prepare, right? We can prepare, we can get a good night's sleep the night before, we can practice, we can take deep breaths, we can flex our muscles. There's lots of different things that we can do. So you're gonna see that. Um, some of the other things you'll see uh, from chapter one on your midterm, you will see the differences between uh, regular conversation and public speaking. And there are some differences and you'll need to know those and hopefully uh, you've got those in your review questions. Um, but as you should know by now, your public speaking is definitely more structured. It uses a more formal language, okay? A more formal delivery, formal language. Uh, highly structured, and um, so there's definitely some differences. There's some similarities too. You tell, you know, you tell the information for maximum impact. You're talking to people, but there's definitely some differences as well. So need to know those, and we'll go over all of this again before the midterm. But I just like to kind of review the chapter and and give you some some insight of the key points. The speech communication process is huge, okay? So when we think about the speech communication process itself, we have a speaker. So that's you or whoever you're listening to. You've got a speaker. The speaker delivers a message and delivers the message through a channel. The channel can be up speaking in front of somebody or if you are watching like let's say the president on TV, okay, the channel is the television. Or let's say you're speaking with somebody on the telephone. The telephone is the channel, okay? So the speaker gives a message through the channel to the listener, okay? The listener then gives feedback, and feedback can be positive or negative, right? We can, and po and feedback can be verbal and nonverbal, right? If we, if we yawn, if we look at our watch, if we're tapping our fingers on the desk, if we're looking around and bored, that can be kind of a negative feedback. If we're smiling and nodding, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, that's some positive feedback. So, speaker delivers a message through the channel to the listener. Listener gives feedback occasionally something happens to impede that message and that's what we call interference all right and then we also have what is called the situation and that is the location and time and place of the speech so let's count them all right speaker is one message is two channel is three listener is four 
feedback is five, interference is six, and the situation is seven. So that is the seven steps of the speech communication process that you will need to know for your midterm. And I think that may be all in chapter one uh, that we have on uh, the midterm that will be coming up and some of the key points that you need to know. Ethnocentrism is one as well. Um, we always want to be sure that as we are putting together our speeches and as we're getting ready to give our speeches that our attitudes and beliefs are not one that we feel our, uh, our thoughts, our, our um the culture in which we live in, the group in which we might belong to, a specific group is better than everyone else, okay? So we need to keep an open mind and um, and listen, but also deliver our speech to everyone, okay? With the mindset of, yes, I want to provide information, Yes, later on in the semester, we want to be persuasive, but we want to make sure that we're doing it ethically. And um, so, like I said, review all that, review all that information um, in chapter one, and just know that those are some of the key points that you'll see on your midterm and the rest of this semester.